you know, what I think is my first real, like, what in the world just happened move, uh, the Chicago Bears just went out and paid Larry Ogunjobi, they're giving him a lot, uh, $40 million for a three-year deal, so right around $13 million a year, so it's not, that's not, like, massive money, but it's significant money for a guy who, you know, I think it's debatable how good he's been these past few years. Uh, you know, in a vacuum, I kind of get the idea behind getting like a run-stuffing interior defensive lineman for the Chicago Bears because that's kind of what this Matt Eberflus kind of mindset is. Let's stop the run with the guys up the middle, you know, defensive linemen. This is kind of what uh, the you know the Indianapolis Colts were able to do consistently, get guys who could stop the run without having to bring a safety in, so that way you can kind of use the extra resources in coverage. That part makes sense. I just don't know if Ogunjobi's really that guy. I mean, listen, uh, pro football focus is not the end-all, be-all, and I think that they're a bit low on him, but just looking at the grades they've given him over these years, in 300 snaps in his rookie year, 2017, he had a very impressive grade at 78.4, but since then, 60.6, uh, 56.0, 51.4, and then last year with Cincinnati, 47.6. Those are tough grades, and those, uh, you know, listen, those do typically carry over year in and year out. So the only year he really, according to them, had a good success rate was his rookie year where he only had 300 snaps. I think Ogunjobi is kind of one of those guys where maybe the uh, production doesn't necessarily match the tape. I think the tape looks better than the production. So some people are a believer in if the tape looks better than the production, let's just kind of rely on the tape to eventually uh, match the production and kind of, a you know, the, the tape will win out basically. So if you have a guy who has good film, then eventually uh, the production will start to match the film. But some people are the opposite, and clearly Eberflus believes that his his numbers are good, the tape is good, and that things will work out well. Uh, but this is a very just a just a very fascinating situation, I think, for the Indianapolis Colts. It's not the move I would have made. People are also bringing up, you know, listen, the Indianapolis Colts did go out and. Uh, trade away. Uh, I keep saying Indianapolis Colts. I don't know why. Uh, the because oh, Eberflus, of course. The Chicago Bears did go out and they made a trade to you know get rid of Khalil Mack. That made sense to me. I, I get the the logic behind it. Of hey, we're spending a lot of money on this guy. We can save about twenty million a year because they still had to pay a little bit for that contract, which confused me. Weird details, but basically they're saving twenty million a year for the next three years by getting rid of Khalil Mack, and you get a second round pick back. But now you're spending 13 of that on Ogan Joby, who I don't know if he's even very good. So you're not really saving that much money, and you're getting a guy who's a significantly worse player than Khalil Mack, certainly, uh, all for a second round pick in seven million. Kind of a weird move. Maybe they see something I don't, but as a whole, this is uh, the first one that I'm going to say, from what I know, from where I'm sitting, I'm not a fan of. But hey, uh, I've been wrong plenty of times before. Uh, that's what I think about this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.